one of the, the rules for the project. So the front row is almost all working diligently. Refugio is ready to work, but he hasn't begun. Do you have your spiral adjustment? <laughs> So um, during my time at HB Lee, uh, you can see me kind of walking around, uh, handing out pieces of spot or uh, lined paper and uh, sharpened pencils that I have uh, at the ready. Um, and this is kind of how I learned to begin class. Um, about one third of the students, particularly the students who struggled um, with note taking in the first place and being prepared, didn't have these things. Um, and I found uh, that being able to just hand them out without discussion very, very quickly, um, stemmed off a lot of problems and allowed the, the opening activities to go a lot faster um, and allowed us all to get started. So this was a preventative management technique that I found worked particularly well in this situation. Does that same thing? Uh, yes. It does. Um, right there is one other management technique that I, I picked up, which was also always having additional copies of the notes projected on the board for students who had difficult difficulty viewing it from afar or who just because of their own cognitive abilities and needs um, had to have it closer. And you will see me at the end of this clip um, kind of bent down with one Brandon Chavez all the way in the back giving him one-on-one -on -one individual attention and I will say that um, it was not terribly effective as he did not do any of the notes that day or many days. So this is later that same class. Um, you we will hear guys. that's Jasmine Three, Williams. Four, eight, and this is the last morning. One of you will be moving. She is technically helping me quiet down some other students oh and God. asking her questions as she does. Um, and you're going to hear me pull her out of class in a minute or two, um, which actually seems like a um, corrective measure, but it's really actually a preventative measure. Um, she was kind of uh, freaking out and really amping up. She has behavioral issues. Um, and this was a deal that she and I had worked out where she could come out of class either at my um, uh, uh, insistence or her own. Um, and then take five minutes, get a drink of water, use the bathroom, and then come back um, and without us having to move to referrals and class removal and more punitive measures. So this was a preventative measure that really worked pretty well a lot of the time for us throughout my time at HB Lee. Not all the time, but a lot of the time. Um, this was the ubiquitous cell phone. Um, it rang during class. And I think in a classroom that was kind of always on the brink of losing control, I was able to, there it is, ringing. There we go. All right. it in the bud pretty quickly. Um, as always in front of middle schoolers, I bemoaned every time I misspoke because they, they picked up, up on it so quickly. But I think that as a corrective measure, this worked pretty well. All right, fast forward, same day, same class, one of my bigger corrective failure measures. I have Christian and Hala, Hala, Hum, or Christian and uh, Brandon in the back, uh, misbehaving as always. And in the middle of my lecture instructions, I ask, one of one of them, and I don't specify which one, I ask, I say please, to move seats and come up, and I haven't figured out how far I'm going to take it, 
what the consequences are going to be. And in the end, I just let it go. Which, of course, is completely untrue. We do move on. I think I wait about 15 seconds before doing so. And the next time Brandon chooses to test my authority, which will be later that day or the next day, certainly, um, I am unfortunately one step behind. So that was not one of my final moments. It's not going to be about the things that you want. Yeah, some people cut out cars, they cut out watches, they cut out fancy things. That's, that's where you are going, maybe, but this is about what you bring to school every single day. So today you have the begin, you're going to begin your rough draft. Your rough draft is probably going to be on your own sheet of paper just like this. You're sketching it out. You can get up. So um, the next, the, my last example um, is myself uh, helping one particular ELL student, uh, sheltered ELL instruction, over the course of a single period. Um, and her name is Nasitu, um, pretty uh, new to the country, um, relatively limited uh, reading and writing and particular note-taking skills. And so this is me kind of at the beginning of the class. Um, I've actually muted it this time. Um, and the class is decently noisy at this part. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of helping her individually. And what's interesting to see is that the next part, I'll let you listen to the class, and the noise level changes. So as you can see, I am uh, still helping the same student. This is later in the day. Um, David Williams, the person who danced behind me, has managed to sit down. Um, and the noise level is really not bad. Um, towards the end of the clip, I do kind of realize that my back is turned towards the rest of the class, and that is a, a, a fatal mistake, um, and manage to, to kind of correct it. Um, but what you're watching is, is really an intervention that I had um, almost every day uh, with um, a student who really struggled with language and how to um, organize the material. And it was really, really willing to work very, very hard, but who needed um, a little bit of uh, extra time and extra attention. And this was a, a day in which the class really worked, um, you know, pretty, pretty quietly. There, there's some noise, but they're not perfect. Um, but, you know, they, they allowed me to, to do what I, I needed to do um, for this particular student. And, um, yeah, that's me kind of moving around. Um, and it, and it, worked, it worked well. So this last clip is um, kind of a day in the life, um, a good day in the life. Uh, it is later in that same day, it's six period, and they're working on the same project, um, but with a, a focus and attention. That's pretty amazing. I'm kind of wandering around. Um, and I will say that, you know, in the beginning I was, I was pretty hesitant to do this project. Um, I really didn't want to kind of watch myself in the classroom. It seemed almost as horrifying as teaching. Um, but going through the video clips, um, and I really did only tape for one day, um, I, I noticed a lot of things that were pretty illuminating. Um, first of all, I shush people, and I need to stop doing that. So that's the last time that's going to happen, I hope. Um, second of all, uh, you know, it's really interesting to see who is where um, within a classroom. You, you tend to gravitate towards the problem spots, and that doesn't necessarily allow you to see the, the 360 degree picture of who is paying attention or not paying attention in the back of the room and, and kind of how that actually is all working. Um, and, and finally, um, I will say that I, I really, um, I didn't come across as nearly as terrified as I sometimes felt. I will also say that watching the kids on video and um, hearing their conversations, which are ridiculous and goofy and exactly what 14 and 13 and 15 year olds should say, was such a reminder of how much affection I developed over my six weeks there. Um, and as the last word in this recording, I would actually like to, to give um, 
a lot of praise uh, to the students who let themselves be filmed, who let me come into their classroom with incredibly limited experience, and and who sort of rolled with it, um, even when it, it wasn't perfect. Um, so thank you, H.B. Lee.